What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, and here we are talking about wearable technology for CrossFit. So the world has been inundated with things like the Whoop Band or Garmin watches or Aura Rings or Apple watches. We got them all here, folks, and we're going to talk about how you can use wearable technology. But more specifically, we're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to CrossFit or functional fitness specifically. Obviously, we have lots of high-level athletes promoting that you need to go buy all of this stuff. I'm here with two amazing people. We have Dr. CJ De Palma and we have Dr. Justine Ward. Um, and we're here to shoot a brand new video course called Recovery RX. It's a, one of our flagship products here at Wad Prep. It's one that we're really, really excited about. And it's gonna help you learn how to optimize your recovery for workouts and basically improve your performance, improve your sleep, improve your overall life, hopefully. And wearable technology is an aspect of that course. So let's dig right into it. What are the good aspects of wearable tech? And I'm going to start with Dr. Justine. Yeah, so the probably the most obvious good aspect of wearable tech is that it gives you information. So before we had wearable tech, which obviously wasn't that long ago, just a few years ago, if you wanted to find out just about anything about yourself, you needed to work with a doctor. If you wanted to know what your sleep was like, you would have to go and do a sleep study in a weird environment that wasn't really reflective of what your life actually looks like. And now we have the opportunity to collect tons and tons of data about ourselves so we have a better understanding of different points of our bodies and physiologies, and that can give us a baseline of understanding and then being able to improve upon those things if we want to. What sort of data are, are you personally using um, to improve your recovery and improve your sleep with the wearable tech. Yeah, so the first sleep tracker that I ever got uh, was a gift. I didn't really think I needed it. I thought I slept pretty well. I was pretty happy with my fitness. And then I started tracking my sleep and I was like, oh, oh wow, it's actually not that great. There is a ton of room for improvement here. Um, and I started to notice using some of the journaling features that some of the uh, apps have that anytime I drank even a little bit of alcohol, like one or two drinks, it really affected my sleep quality. And mm -hmm. that was not something that I was previously alive to. I thought like, you know, one, two, as long as I didn't feel drunk, that it wasn't gonna affect me that much. And so now I actually drink a lot less and my sleep has gotten much better. And that's correlated to all sorts of improvements like um, more lean mass, better metabolism, stronger, better, better engine. Like all of these things have followed now that I've made these like small, like pretty insignificant lifestyle changes that have really impacted my sleep because I started tracking it. And you wouldn't have known about those things if you didn't have this, this sensor giving you that feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise you're just going by how you feel. And if how you feel is a little bit tired, but you feel that way every single day, that's just your normal. So mm -hmm. you think you feel good. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. I know for me personally, let's continue a bit on the, the good of wearable tech. I was, I was in the same boat. I thought that because I thought about trying to optimize my sleep a lot, I naturally got enough sleep or, you know, like my sleep habits were high quality. But when I actually picked up my first whoop band, I very quickly realized that I was always finding an excuse like five out of seven days per week, I was finding an excuse to stay up a little later and wake up a little earlier. And in my mind, prior to actually tracking it on a day-to-day -day basis, it would always be like, oh, just this one time, I'll stay up and watch one more episode uh, and I'll go mountain biking a little bit earlier tomorrow morning. And I, I didn't realize that that was like almost a daily occurrence. So what was great for me is my, my sleep habits and consistency really improved when I actually started having this hard data to back up like Ben, you are not sleeping enough. It's, you have to actually dedicate time to sleep more. And then additionally, when I moved here to Denver, uh, there's a, quite a nice craft beer scene. And I would like have one beer with dinner every single night for a little while there. And it was tanking my, my recovery. And not necessarily just like the specific score that I would get, but I could see HRV was down. I could see um, the disturbances while I was sleeping were up. And it was just kind of a crazy thing to, to notice how, how one drink could really, really affect me. So um, both from a sleep tracking perspective, it really, really helped me. And then another thing I know that we were talking about, uh, which is something I struggle with, is actually activity. Like there'll be times where I get really, really involved in wad prep or, or work in general, and I will sit on a chair for un lots of unbroken hours per day and almost have no movement, like no physical movement. And sure enough, my, my actual, my Garmin watch, when I picked that up, I started noticing like, wow, I only had a thousand steps today. Like that's really low. Uh, and CJ knows about a little bit about that. So it's interesting when you start having these tools, they can be annoyances and we're going to get into that, but they can also just keep it in the back of your mind that, wow, I, sh I really should get up and take the dogs for 
a W-A-L-K, because you can't say walk or else will freak out. Um, so it, it helped, stay, helped me stay accountable to my activity level and sleep. CJ, did you have any positive benefits when you started wearing wearable tech? Yeah, so I think uh, consistent with Justine is I felt like I, I knew everyone, it's a kind of a running joke with everyone who knows me, is that I sleep very little. Um, and I didn't realize how little that was. And so it helps me just create this little bit of objective feedback of, hey, you know, for the 37 night in a row, you're under five hours. And it's like, all right, well, maybe I should at least try to get six and try to, you know, so I push for six and seven now and I can track, you know, how well I do that. And uh, I never struggled, uh, or at least the way the wearable tech said, I slept really well within the time frame, but it was just so short. And so the tech has helped me to force myself to like try to get over that six hour mark. And that's like what's helped me the most. Awesome, awesome. So we've talked about the good. We have uh, specific metrics that we're able to actually get without going into a sleep study. We have uh, maybe an increase in activity on my part, particularly, and then also just being more aware of our sleep patterns, which as we know, and as we have talked about in other videos here on YouTube, it's extremely important. So the bad that we're about to talk about isn't that bad, but it can be, all right. So awareness of these metrics can be a very positive thing. Movement, activity, sleep. What's the bad version of that, CJ? Yeah, so uh, like we said, the consistency between all of this was awareness, right? Awareness on total time and sleep, awareness on general activity, and then general knowledge, right? Well, to every side, I think there's like, you can overdo it, right? And what we call hyper-awareness. And so we take these bits of objective data and this information, and then we over-focus on it, and then we let it decide our decision-making too much, and then we become obsessive. And so we call that hyper-awareness. And most of our recovery is subjective in nature, right? You wake up and it's how you feel in the morning. And so when you throw that out the window and you just let this score or this color define what you're doing, it's no longer a benefit. And so what I do with the athletes that I've been working with for a while is, again, I, we like wearable tech, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but we know what their training volume looks like. We know what works well with them and we know how well they're training day to day. Um, and then we have all of those things dialed in. So at that point, I feel we don't need the tech anymore. We don't need another hand in the pot. So what do you do? We take it away. And we do that because I don't want them to have that input, whether it's good or bad, because unless it's good, it's bad at that point, right? Like unless it's green, it's a negative. And this is for your CrossFit Games athletes. Right, and we, we're qualifying people for the CrossFit Games. And I believe you said that you actually force them to stop using wearable tech. How long? Um, it's, and so it depends on the athlete, but most of them, it's anywhere from two weeks to a month to six, probably a month out max, um, because we're really spiking it up and I know it's going to be red because they're what we call, we're in an overreaching phase because we don't have to get into that, but, um, it's going to be really low. Right. And you don't want the negative yeah. feedback of this, this device saying you're not recovered. You should rest today. And then you're like, but my coach keeps telling me to work out right. hard. Yeah. You don't want that feedback. Right. We don't want that feedback. So. So that's so hyper awareness. Um, I've seen it personally where, where there was actually a moment in time where I was getting probably a little bit too obsessed with, oh, if I'm if I'm in the red uh, or if, or with the aura ring, if I have a low recovery score, I'm just I'm just not going to do anything right. today, and it would like affect the energy that I brought to work. And is it because I'm actually not recovered, or is it because this device is spitting out a number, and then I look at it and say, oh yeah, I don't feel very right. good. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important to, to know that there are the benefits that we talked about, but it, it's important if you tend to be an OCD person or an obsessive person about things and you find yourself every single morning, you wake up, you check your score and you're like almost upset if you have a lower recovery score than you thought, then that might be a good sign that it's time to like maybe wane yourself off of it and realize that it's not being utilized to the, your fullest benefit. Are there any other things that you would say are the bad of wearable technology? No, I, I completely agree with what we're talking about with over-awareness. And I've had people say that to me where they're like, yeah, I just, I, I wanna stop tracking because I'm overly obsessed with it. And I think that like any other tool that we use to, to track our bodies, right? Like with a scale, you can become obsessed with the number on the scale and completely lose context, right? Where your body might look great and your lean mass has gone up, but because your weight went up, you feel right. shitty about it. And it's Fantastic. like, you know, like exactly. what is the goal that you're looking for here? And are you doing the process and are you seeing the outcomes in other areas? Because that's just, you know, the, the score that you have or the, the device that you're using is just one piece of the puzzle. Yep, definitely. So overall, what you need to understand is, is it can be used effectively to be aware of positive things to impact both your performance and your life. But there is a fine line between it turning into these good aspects, turning into a bad thing, which could be relying too much on the score that is output by some random algorithm or uh, the, 
the hyper awareness that comes with waking up and immediately letting the score that you were presented dictate the rest of your day. Right. So we've talked about the good, we've talked about the bad. Now let's talk about the ugly. When we move into the ugly section, that's more of like, what are just the pitfalls of the technology? What are things that it just tends to fail to do? Again, obviously we are here wearing all kinds of wearable technology. So the good outweighs the bad for, for a lot of us, obviously, uh, proofs in the pudding here. However, there are some things that, uh, like I, I can lead right into it. One of the ugly aspects of um, wearable tech is the activity tracking is not very good across all domains of fitness, a classic example. And something that, that pops up in some Facebook groups that I'm in is you can get, uh, at least for the whoop, you'll get like a 20.2, which is a very, 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 very high strain, playing 18 holes of golf, that's, that's tough. But, but you can have the world's hardest bodybuilding workout where you're just going to be sore for weeks. You know, you way overdid it. And you'll almost have a negligible, like it won't even register that you were exercising. So Justine, let's talk a little bit about that. Like what's going on there? Um, so the big thing is that it's really only doing your strainer activity score. It doesn't matter which device you're using. They all are focused on recording your activity relative to your cardiovascular output. So it's not going to measure how hard you, you know, lifted weights, how much energy you put into work, as you said, across all domains. And so if you are doing shorter, higher intensity workouts, you're also going to see a lower score because you didn't keep your heart rate up for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that we can have great benefits from having short, high intensity workouts. It doesn't have to be that we're out doing, you know, a 5k run every day in order to hit our strain goals. There's lots of ways to stress the body. And uh, trackers really only pick up on your heart rate. Yeah, it's funny because so I do quite a bit of mountain biking and I know that on days that I mountain bike, just having like a two hour elevated heart rate, I will have a strain that's incredibly high, right? right? But if I go and hit a really, really tough CrossFit class that maybe lasts for an hour total, the actual Metcon is only 20 minutes, and I compare the, the how I feel, I'm way more tired from that CrossFit workout the next couple days. So like my recovery should be more negatively impacted there. However, the strain that's reported by my activity tracker is way higher just simply because I had a higher elevated or I had a, a longer duration of an elevated heart rate. Anything else you wanna talk about the ugly in terms of like what the actual capabilities are of the technology? Yeah, and so you mentioned it to finish the bad section. It's just an algorithm, right? The scores are, um, it's just an algorithm based on uh, what the sleep that it's tracking, right? Deep sleep, REM sleep, um, and, and, uh, and light. And so, and then your activity level from the day before. And so if you're a weightlifter or a power lifter or, um, a bodybuilder, right? And you wear wearable tech, it's not going to register you very well. And so your score for the following day, while we talk about the, maybe the inaccuracies of it already is going to be even further off from what it probably should be. Right. And so those are the ugly, right? And so that's just the infancy of wearable tech as uh, technology itself, right? It's, it's just growing, it's a baby, it's going to get better. They'll find a way to do that, but right now they don't have one, right? And so some of them have the ability to put in your own activities and things like that, but that doesn't alter the algorithm. That just shows you, that's basically the journaling effect. So there is a big gap in like what it's able to measure. Right, so there's, there's a bit of a discrepancy between like, if you're a cardio athlete, then you are going to feel like you are the king tut of the world like i exercise so hard right. but if you're not a, a cardio athlete and you and you lift weights uh, while the central nervous system tax there is great the cardiovascular load there isn't very much right. and the whoops or or aura ring or whatever or garmin or apple watch they're just gonna be like did you even work out today right. yep. and that can be really frustrating but bottom line is here we are still wearing this wearable tech so we've talked about the bad, we've talked about the ugly, but I do think that with the proper coaching, with the proper understanding of how to use these tools, the good can outweigh the bad and the ugly. If you would like to learn more about how to optimize your recovery, we actually have the ultimate recovery guide for CrossFit. Go to wadprep.com slash recovery. You can download a free PDF. We have a lot more information about wearable tech and sleep tips and all kinds of stuff in there that's really gonna help. Or if you want everything that our three collective minds know. So basically what they know and like a little bit about what I know about recovery to optimize for performance and health, then make sure that you join Recovery RX, which is our brand new flagship course that we're producing here at Wad Prep. And if you're someone who decides that you would like to try a piece of wearable tech, we actually have a special promo code. If you go to join.whoop.com slash Wad Prep, the first month of your Whoop is on me. 
And if you like it and you find good benefit like I did, maybe you'll stick around and wear a Whoop for a long time. If not, you'll be like CJ and you'll kick the Whoop to the curb and maybe wear something else. And that's totally fine. The results are up to you and how you apply it. Hope that you like this video. In the comments below, let me know one thing that you learned about wearable technology that you are going to use in your decision making to wear wearable tech. Or if not, just share a pro and a con of what you're currently wearing. Maybe you're not wearing anything. Maybe you're wearing a Fitbit. I don't know much about those. What kind of wearable tech are you wearing? Leave a comment below and let us know a pro and a con. And I look forward to reading those and we will see you in the next video. Oh, what time did you get? Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, no, I could have finished. I just uh, wasn't feeling it today, man. But you know what? My whoop score this morning was super low. That's gotta be something to do with it, right?